You know what, it, it was a little different, probably more for him than anything, because I think this is the first time he said in his career he'd ever been in the box. You know, usually old line coaches, I've only seen that one other time in, in my time that an old line coach is in the box. But uh, I will say this, it was really good to have him back. We didn't have him last the week before, so uh, he's a, definitely a safety net for me or safety blanket, so to speak. I mean, I enjoy uh, – enjoy him and glad he's feeling better and, and back a part of our staff. But, uh, you know, I thought our communication was really good. He, you know, now with the iPads, it's actually probably a great deal for him to be able to sit there and look at it, you know, sitting down and with his condition, we just felt like it was safer for him and better for him to be up there. And, you know, we had Kyle uh, Fuller, our GA down on the field. Corey's a volunteer guy with us. So we, we had, uh, I thought we had a really good communication and, uh, you know, I think it's something that Randy wants to be back on the field as soon as he can with his guys, though. Chip, Mac was talking about uh, the offensive line being kind of banked up going into this game, and then there was the additional challenge of you guys just running so many plays on offense as you're trying to get back yeah. into the game. Did you see the fitness level that you were hoping to see from them? Because I assume you had to rotate some guys. Yeah, and we did. We had to rotate. But, but no, the fitness was fine. I thought, I thought our guys, you know, we, we got into a game we really probably don't want to be in from the standpoint of 50 throws, close to 50 throws, and putting some guys in, in vulnerable positions. You know, now when you do that and, and we're playing catch up, then now your third, the third down pressures become first and second down pressures now because they know you're throwing. And, uh, you know, there's some – we got some inexperience there. Um, you know, Jacoby's still learning as well as some of the old linemen. So we struggle to sometimes with that. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's really probably not the game we want to be in if we can choose that. But, it, you know, that was the situation. And we were, uh, you know, trying to, trying to play catch up there. And, um, you know, I thought our guys handled the conditioning well. I think what, what do we have about 80 snaps or something like that. And uh, I was pleased with that. What did you guys see from Jacoby Saturday that wasn't evident in August? Yeah, I think I think just his understanding of the of the offense from the standpoint of, of the concepts versus the different coverages. You know, he got in here so late, and you you, you got about a week that you can rep him some because we were trying to rep at that time three guys, and then once you once you get to that point, you got to start preparing. We were preparing for Minnesota, and you just don't have enough reps to rep three guys. And I think what we saw the last three weeks is him get more reps and, and him continue to grow. We already knew he's a talented player for sure. And I think you've seen him take charge of the offense more, be more vocal with the O-line, just, just kind of running the show, so to speak. And I think that's what I've seen in the last three weeks is his growth has become. And, just, and I think that comes with confidence and more confidence in knowing exactly what we're doing. And there, there's some things still we got to clean up, but a lot of positives that we can take out of that game, um, you know, from the standpoint of individual play, you know, for, for some of the throws he made and, and a pocket presence. I thought it, pocket presence was, was solid. There was a couple he probably left that he shouldn't. I know the interception, the one he could have stayed in there. But uh, lots of good things that he can grow on and lots of mistakes that, that I think we can get corrected. Max said he still has to learn more of the playbook. You guys still have to feed him more of that. But with everything that's in the playbook, do you believe that when he gets to the point where he knows everything, you can use the whole playbook with him? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, 100%. And, you know, the playbook is a, a, is a kind of your base, you know, is where you start. And each week you pull from that. You don't carry everything in for every game anyway. So the way I see it is the, the, the more reps he's been getting in practice is why you've seen that improvement. And as we get ready for this next one, you know, we'll, you, don't, you don't carry your entire playbook in anyway. So I feel pretty confident that as we go in the season, it's just more experience for him on the field. And uh, I think you'll see him uh, continue to improve each and every week. Was that, was that the worst this, this particular offensive line has played here early in the season? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. The worst, I mean, I, I thought at times we played really well. They did a good job early of trying to take away our inside zone. That's why we went to a wide zone, you know. Yeah, we, well, we, when they're junking it up in, in the middle, we, that's why we went to the wide zone there and, uh, and got some runs on the perimeter. And then, like I said, once you got in a certain position, you're throwing every down, and that makes it tough. I mean, anytime you throw it a whole bunch, you're going you're gonna to open yourself up. But, no, I was pleased. At times we looked really good. I don't – I don't think the O line played bad at all. I mean, there's plays they'd like to have back, but, you know, and uh, some confusion sometimes with some of the looks we got. But overall, you know, we've got a good, good young group. I think they'll continue to improve. 
to uh, play. We, we talk about matchups in basketball. Yeah. Isn't that a big deal with OL when you've got the large tackles, they've got quicker guys in the end. Yeah. Adjust to that? yeah, I think so. I think I think both those those guys are, that we have are big guys, and they are athletic for their size, but they are young players. And, uh, you know, we try to do some things, chipping and helping them and so forth with the backs and getting the slides to the right side so we get a, a, you know, a slide going instead of it being a man protection. And, um, and at times we did a solid job of that, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a couple of times our communication, I think, broke down on, on where, we were, where we were pointing the slide to and so forth, but all things that we can fix. This may be a silly question. You guys have talked all year about playing multiple quarterbacks. It seems like now it's Jacoby's job moving forward. Yeah, I think early in the year when we were not sure, especially after Max, you know, went down, I think there was some thought, okay, let's just let's just see let these guys play some and see what happens. And that was the plan. I think as time's going on, I think Jacoby's uh, been able to go in and maybe establish himself as, as a guy that can really throw the ball down the field. And I think we needed that element to the offense and uh, you know, as long as he keeps playing well, I think I think we'll uh, we'll probably be in that direction. But Connor's got to be ready to go, and he's preparing each and every day, just like he's going to play. And uh, we'll see what the situation uh, dictates. He did have a snap Saturday, Connor, because you called on the way Yeah, and he fumbled the snap. Mm -hmm. what, what, did, what happened with that play, and what did you say to him about yeah, that? Yeah, he fumbled. I mean, he dropped the snap. I don't know what to say. Uh, just a mistake on his part, I guess. Uh, you know, Jacoby. You know, you got you got two choices. You can you can call a timeout, or you can you got or you got to get another guy in. And uh, you know, I think Connor will tell you each. You know, he's usually going to be fine on that, but just made a mistake. You guys had that uh, brief, you know, three point lead. It was fourteen eleven, and obviously you mentioned the nature of game it kind of became. Yeah. What is the I guess challenge that then comes in from a play calling standpoint to try to like you know. Re, you know, regain control a little bit. I know you have to mm -hmm. throw it a lot more than you would like to, but what becomes that challenge as it just, you know, kind of progresses? Yeah, I think the challenge is when you have uh, a, a, a young old line experience and a young quarterback playing, you, you don't want that, that pressure on them all the time. You want to be able to, and we have Omarion Hampton, who's in my mind the best back in the country. So we want to be able to stay with that. That's what we, who we want to be. We said we want to be a run play action team. And, and uh, once we, you know, and we contributed to some of that. You know, we had the pick six, we had the, the fumble he mentioned earlier. We had, um, you know, some um, opportunities where we gave them some points and helped dig ourselves in that hole. And then once the hole was so big, we had to, you know, then it's like, hey, what can we do to get back in it? Let's go fast, let's throw it, and then mix in some runs every now and then and a screen every now and then. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we helped contribute to digging ourselves in that hole. And, and uh, you know, it's one that we all believed we were going to get out of for sure, even even in the fourth quarter. Really proud of our guys, the way they, they fought. Our, our, our guys went out and we challenged them at halftime to do that, and they responded like you'd want them to do it. And uh, at the end of the day, we just did, couldn't, couldn't rebound enough. You just spent the last 40 minutes, 45 minutes talking to Mac a lot about what he said in the locker room. What was your takeaway from that, and what were your conversations like after? I'll be honest with you, I come from upstairs, so I barely get in there, and I'm sure he addressed all that earlier, so I don't really have a comment on that. How much has Max been able to help the quarterback since he's been What's that, Max? I couldn't hear you. I said, how much has Max been able to help Jacoby and some of the other quarterbacks? Yeah, oh, okay. Max, yeah. He, you know, uh, he hadn't been back here in the building every day, but you know I know of support you know through texts and through calls and so forth. And uh, he did sit in meetings one day. I'm pretty sure it was last week, and uh, it was great to see him. Our team really really enjoys Max, and uh, I know he's been a he's been an ear for him to to you know to to vent to and so forth. And uh, he does have experience, so I think that's that helps you know Jacoby and Connor, and he still is a huge part of our program. Chip, what do you see with regards to Duke and Coach Diaz? Obviously, he's a, def he's a defensive coach, yeah. and they've been playing really well in this early part yeah, of the season. Yeah, they have. I see, you know, typical uh, Coach Diaz, Manny Diaz. I mean, he's, he's got a defensive reputation. He's always done a great job wherever he's been. Uh, he's going to give you a lot of multiple looks and, and some pressure looks. And, and at the same time, you know, he's going to make you earn everything from the standpoint he's not going to cut you, you know, give you any free guys down the field. So I think for us, we got to, you know, really figure a way, okay, how can we, how can we build, play on our strengths and how can we can run the football effectively and then use that to help us throw it down the field some. And I think that's what we're always trying to do. And Manny's defense always presents a lot of challenges because he can outnumber you pretty quick and, and give you some, some looks. And, um, that maybe you hadn't seen, and he'll always have a surprise or two for you on that. Over the years, I've coached at different places and run across him a few times, and got a lot of respect for him for sure. Have you gone back and looked at some of the old? You would see like 
Amy games from the past on Coach Diaz was there to just sort of get a feel for yeah. what, what you know, it was I, I can't tell you that, right? For sure. No, I'm Fair. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <You> no. <can. laughs> the, when you're in coaching, you got long memories. You try to remember anything from way back. But I wasn't here then, so I'm not as familiar with the personnel and so forth. But I just know that, like, we kind of are creatures of our habit. Um, we all do things, including myself, that, that we feel like have been successful and you know, Manny gives you enough looks and enough things over the years that, that uh, he's not going to let you zero in on him. We're just going to have to play good, sound football. And, you know, the thing, the thing that we're going to have to do is take care of the ball better. You know, that's what we didn't do, uh, you know, Saturday. We didn't protect the ball, and that's, one of the, that's the first thing we talk about each and every week. And so I think I was just kidding with you on that. But to answer your question is, like, we just need to play good football. We need to execute at a higher level, make sure we communicate really well up front across the board because of the, the issues he can present you and then protect the ball and do those things. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have a great opportunity to score some points. Chip, what does having a full game of Jacoby, a quarterback, 48 passing attempts, the whole yeah. nine yards, do for you in terms of knowing what you can give him, what you want to do with him in the offense? Moving forward into Duke and everything, what is it like just having sort of that full, full, you know, plate of stuff? Yeah, I think I think anytime you know, anytime you feel like that you have a guy that can um, that can execute down the field and be able to to uh, you know attack the defense down the field, that's definitely a help. We want to be able to run the ball first. That's that's where kind of it all starts. And and then I think what Jacoby does is, uh, you know, I think you saw this on Saturday, his ability to to have really good pocket awareness at times he was excellent in that there was a few that that he wasn't but I think the ability to do that go through the progression stay with the read understand and and really I was pleased you know the the one bad decision that I really thought was the was the interception or return for a touchdown where he scrambled and threw back across his body which is a no-no you know we all say that all the way back to junior high football but and, and he was the first to to be hard on himself on that. The other one was a, a ball that, uh, you know, I thought he threw pretty well. We did, it was pretty tight coverage, and we got to keep coming back and help help keep that ball from being intercepted. It was a tight window for sure, but that's the way college football is. The windows are tighter. So, overall, I thought he made a lot of really good decisions. The one thing that I thought he did, too, is he, he, he protected the ball pretty well in the pocket. The one time it collapsed and they got him, he probably held it a little longer than he should. But, you know, when you throw it 48 times and you, you make two or three mistakes, I think that's pretty good. And like I said, I, I was really proud. And the one thing that I think the best thing he did is he showed a lot of toughness because he got hit some, you know, and we don't we got to limit those. And we're trying to go back and figure out, okay, how can we keep this from happening again? And some of it's little things, and some of it we got to do a better job of, uh, of helping, helping out some on that. But I'm saying from your perspective in terms of what you can give him, yep. uh, like how does that help to have the full, the full a lot, just the full game to look at and dissect? Oh, yeah, 100%. From first quarter to yeah, more reps and more, more ways to evaluate, more things. Hey, what, what, is, what does he do well and so forth? I think that's, that's a key. And, you know, each quarterback's different. You know, when I first got here last year with Drake, it was, hey, how, you know, what is he like? What, what does he feel comfortable with? And we tried to stay in that world. And we're doing the same thing with Jacoby. And, you know, now we've got a game and a half, I guess, of, of him playing a lot of snaps and starting to figure out, I think, what he's, what he's good at and, and what we can execute. Chip, a, a byproduct of, yeah. you know, the other day was the ball did move around a lot. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, Ship got in there, Taylor got in there, yeah. Mario Green had a catch. Uh, since you guys do have some injuries at that position mm -hmm. right now, how – a, ready do you feel those guys, you know, yeah. kind of are to, you know, step in and, and slot in? And then also just uh, not just for this week, but I guess moving forward, their ability to kind of contribute in, in real game offense. Like they yeah, did. you know, those guys came in in January. I think you're talking about uh, Ship and Alex and probably Vari a little bit too. And uh, really, really impressed with that group. We got a, we had a great freshman class come in. I mentioned uh, Davion Goss or Bullet, you know, last week we talked about him a lot, but you know, Ship got in, made a few plays. Alex, Alex showed up. Bari made a few plays, and I think when you have the ability to spread the football around, that's really good. I, I want to say we had eight or ten people catch balls last last game, which is something we like. And um, you know, I think, like you said, the season's a long season. We got a few guys banged up, so those guys continue to come on, and that's going to help us down the road. And you know, hopefully, we'll get a guy or two back. But really, really proud of what those guys did Saturday, and think they'll continue to grow the more reps they get too. Did you? Do you, do you feel like we're starting to see Kobe get back to where yeah. the type of player that you all know he can be? I mean, it looked like he had some yeah. extra extra juice. You know, yeah, some of those I, I noticed that too. I thought he looked, uh, 
you know, look, maybe a step faster and, and really, uh, you know, he's made, uh, you know, before he was injured, he made a lot of, a lot of big plays for us. And, you know, you know, he's had basically, you know, almost uh, close to a year, I guess, or maybe a little, a little less than a year of, 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 you know, being banged up. So it, it was good to get him back. And you can see his ability. He can stretch the field a little bit. He had a great uh, – the, the uh, ball he caught on our sideline was a great throw and catch. And I think that's going to help us as we grow is getting those guys back and uh, getting, getting everybody healthy going. And, you know, J.J. made a couple of big catches, veteran guys. Gavin got in and made a play. So uh, we got, we're going to have to have all hands on deck as the season goes.